Hello, welcome to another episode of Ask ZBrush. Okay, so for this one, we got a question, what does QGrid do? Um, I, again, one of these features I really enjoy using, especially since uh, I'm a big fan of using ZModeler. So QGrid is gonna be found in dynamic subdivisions. So let's take a look. I got this ship that uh, I've been making here. Let's just take a look at this back wing part here, okay? And let's just solo this out so we're only looking at this. So currently the wing is in dynamic subdivisions and I'm using creasing. So this can be found in the tool palette, in geometry, and then right here you're gonna see there's a dynamic subdiv menu and it's activated right now. So I can turn it on and off, right? And I can use my shortcut shift D to turn it off and then D by itself to turn it on. And in this case, ZBrush has asked me, do you always wanna use that for the dynamic subdivs when you're gonna do this? I'm gonna say yes. So as long as you don't have any regular subdivision levels here, the shift D will turn it off and the D will turn it on. Okay, so you can see right below that is the Q grid option. So let's zoom in just a little bit more into this, okay? And let's go ahead and actually turn off the poly paint so you guys can see this a little bit better. And I'm gonna turn off dynamic subdiv. So what you have here is a model that is very low polygon, right? And it's very faceted in the sense that it's got very sharp angles in places. So as a user, I would wanna see, well, what does this look like when I divide? So this is where dynamic subdiv comes into play. I can now look in essence at a preview of what would this look like if I divided it four times. So you can see right here, this smooth subdiv is setting to four. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is actually turn this off now. So we're back to just looking at this on the low, low polygon version. And here's where QGrid's gonna come into play now. So I'm gonna activate QGrid by just turning this slider to one. And now QGrid is activated. And so what we've activated is a beveling to every single edge on this particular piece. This is why there's a bevel option, a chamfer option, then there's a coverage slider, and then there's a constant, in essence, keeping the constant width of the bevel across all edges. So I'm gonna zoom in again a little bit closer to the tip here. And you can see now if I turn it off and turn it on, turn it off and turn it on, you can see every single edge is now getting like a, a little bevel. And then the coverage, you'll see, will just make that bevel wider or tighter, right? And I'm gonna turn on polyframe mode. And what you can see, because I got every edge creased right now, there's multiple edges now. Okay, so every main edge is now getting another edge on the right and left side of it, right? So here we'll uncrease everything. So you can see kind of that. Here's the main edge, that's the darker one. Main edge is a darker one. And now you can see this Q grid is adding another edge here and another edge here on opposite sides of this edge. And then same thing here. So every single edge is going to get a nice beveling. Now you can also switch it to a chamfer, which is doing more of a profile that's rounded, okay? And then the bevel is doing more of a flat profile, right? So here we'll make the coverage a little bit bigger. So you can see right here, this is kind of flat. And if you switch to chamfer, see it's starting to round it. Now the Q grid slider can go higher than one. Really this is where using chamfer comes into play. So I might wanna add more Q gridding, so you can see I'm getting a little bit better of a roundness everywhere now, but what's happening is we're adding more spans of topology on opposite sides of each one of the main pieces. So because I have it at four, you can see I'm getting more pieces of uh, edge looping, and now I'll go through it. So there's one, two, three, four, and you can keep going, and it's just gonna add more and more edge loops. Okay, so the thing you gotta keep in mind about this is when you go to apply this, you're actually gonna get all that topology now. So if I dial it back down to one and hit apply, you can see you don't get as much topology and you can clearly see what is happening. So in most cases, I tend to leave my Q grid at one 
when I'm using bevel. And then if I'm using chamfer, this is where I may up the Q grid a little bit. Okay, so before we finish this video off, there is something else I wanna cover with this. So here we've got some objects, simple geometrical shapes. We got a cube, we got a cylinder, and we got a sphere. Now, because Q grid is going to be applied to every single edge, because it's a global uh, option, it's not gonna work as well with a sphere or a cylinder in the sense that you're not gonna be able to maintain right now. You can see the sphere is very round, right? And then the cylinder's got a nice softness in here compared to the faceted look that we have before, right? Because right now we are smoothing this, so we're gonna get a very nice smooth sphere, nice smooth cylinder through here, and then the cube is smooth with some rounded corners. Okay, so if I turn this off, and turn on Q-Grid for this, it's still gonna work and it's gonna be nice that I can actually add a bevel, but you can see it's still also beveling every single face. So all of these edges in here are getting multiple bevels. Obviously there's two bevels going along this edge loop, two bevels going along this, along this, and then you can see same thing in the sphere. So the reason why I'm saying it might not be something you'd wanna use in a sphere or a cylinder, is you can see it's still very faceted. Right, this has still got a faceting look to it, and this has got a faceting look to it. This looks fine. So the Q grid was really meant more for objects that are more box shaped or rectangular shaped, like that. I tend not to use it as much with something like this that has some kind of roundness in it. This is where I would revert to using instead of Q grid, we would use our smooth subdivs, and then where I'd want to crease, I would crease. And there you have it. That is using QGrid and dynamic subdiv. So thank you for watching this video. Please continue to send in these questions to our Twitter account through the hashtag AskZBrush. Again, hashtag AskZBrush. Again, thank you for watching this video. Have a great day. Happy ZBrushing.